Nevertheless, that finally brings this into the consensus reality once and for all, with no possibility of returning and going back. That moment is the most profound event in human history. And you are going to get to see it happen. And that's the best reason I can think for staying healthy and taking your vitamins. Very quickly, exopolitics. I am an exopolitical activist. I am not a shaman, right? I'm not a guru. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a fortune teller. I have no right brain whatsoever. I traded it away for baseball cards at the age of eight. I got a Mickey Mantle original, pristine condition. I am an exopolitical activist. Prior to 2000, I was a political activist. Because exo, the word exopolitics did not emerge in the lexicon until 2000, uh, as a result of a book by Alfred Weber, a really advanced futurist, <laughs> right, who lives in the future 24 and 7. Uh, and so after then, after that point, I called myself an exopolitical activist, but basically I'm just a political activist, but I use the other because it sounds cooler. And I say, it's why I wear these sunglasses, because they're cooler. So what is that? Well, obviously, it's got something to do with politics. It has, in fact, to do with the politics of UFOs, which is another way of saying is that this issue will be resolved politically, not scientifically. Uh, it never had a chance to be resolved scientifically. You could have dragged four aliens right in front of the National Science Foundation. You could have put a saucer in a U-Haul and taken it to the Pentagon. They would have cleaned it up very quickly. They would have given you a bus ticket out of town and told you, never come back. And that would have been that. It simply wasn't going to happen. This has been a political issue since 1947. And ultimately, it had to be engaged that way, which is no way to disrespect all the ufologists and the scientists that addressed this issue from 47 on. They did tremendous work. We stand on their shoulders. But it wasn't going to get the job done. And so in the mid-90s, we started talking about the politics of UFOs. And that became the politics of disclosure. Disclosure is a term starts coming into lexicon 97, 98, 99. Greer helped. I did it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. This term is important. I just told you what it was. The politics of disclosure becomes exopolitics in 2000. It is a field of study. It is not a cult. It is not a religion, right? It is being heavily attacked for the same reason that they burned Giordano Bruno at the stake. It is the new term to describe a new field of study. It is a huge area. It covers everything to do with the political and social engagement of this issue by the human race and will eventually go to cover galactic diplomacy and, and, and treaties and deals and who knows what. It covers the government's action, the truth embargo. It covers the scientific politics in the days of James McDonald. It covers all of that, and it's really cool. And so that's why the examiner is now exploding with articles about it, because in the realm of political science, everything goes. In the realm of pure science, you work like a dog to get a little paper together, you submit it to the science journal, and they refuse. And you go off and rewrite it two years later and put it back in. But in the world of political science, the world of ideas, everybody can write about what they think is important, and the articles pour forward. And that's important, because society doesn't just evolve on the basis of the scientific method. It involves on the basis of complex ideas put forward by millions of people in many forums. We sift through them, we find the best, we move forward. Science is not enough. And so exopolitical science, which is the same as exopolitics, is here to stay. And I appreciate its critics. Some of them have come up to me personally and said, Steve, the only thing you need to do is to quit, leave, retire, go away. We never want to hear from you again, because the work you're doing is going to destroy everything that's been done. And my colleagues have heard similar things. I understand that. But that's not what's going to happen. This is the resolution, and this is the process. Exopolitics, the key definition is the first one there. The art or science of government is concerned with guiding or influencing government policy toward extraterrestrial phenomena and extraterrestrial beings. That is the principal one. The exopolitical era doesn't really have a chance to get going until 91. The term doesn't come into play until 2000 with Weber, but it actually begins in 91, late 91, Christmas Day, as a matter of fact. Why? It's just not complicated. The number one barrier to the UFO issue being resolved in a public way was the Cold War. 
which some of you may have already forgotten about, but let me just refresh your memory. A Soviet ideology, completely opposed to a Western ideology, built 10,000 plus nuclear warheads, put them on top of missiles. We did the same thing, built nuclear submarines, put them on short notice so that if a war started and you were near the coast, you had about 18 seconds to live. And this was the state for approximately four, for 44 years. The total amount spent on this Cold War was almost $20 trillion between the two nations. That's money that didn't go for factory schools, hospitals, you know, research in, in other areas, or just the, the improvement of the human condition. That went for an ideological standoff that, had it been lit, would have destroyed virtually every advanced life on the surface of the planet due to nuclear winter. This was a big deal. When I was 22, I never thought I'd live to be 35, because history said that humans had never, ever built weapons they didn't use. And we did, of course, use the atom bomb, but we never used the hydrogen bomb. We used it twice. We never did again. I think that's one of the most remarkable things that you would ever imagine experiencing. We built those bombs and didn't use them. I didn't think that was possible. I didn't expect to live. It was a Damocles sword hanging over the entire human race. Talk about nightmares. Talk about your Freudian subliminal stuff. Everybody gets up in the morning thinking that somebody's going to push a button and destroy everything. Now, if that isn't going to put you on antacids and mood-altering drugs and Prozac and whatever else, nothing will. And, of course, that's exactly what happened. That was the Cold War. And in, until that Cold War was over, there was no chance that the military intelligence community of any of the major nations was ever going to allow the ET issue to become collective consensus. It was not going to happen. They viewed it as far too risky. There were too many unknowns, too many variables they couldn't control. It could lead to a destabilization, some sort of false ET technology arms race. The next thing you know, somebody does a preemptive strike. They simply couldn't risk it. And so until the Cold War was over, nothing was going to happen, and that's exactly what the case was. But the Cold War ends on Christmas Day. The final end was, of course, the abolishment of the Communist Party on Christmas Day, 1991. And, and we now enter a new period. In fact, the door to disclosure opens on that day. And from that point forward, we are in essentially a potentially uh, eminent you know, disclosure event. And thus, the political resolution becomes possible. And so the exopolitical processes really get going in 1992 forward. One of the earliest pioneers was Stephen Greer. I entered the field in 96. Others have entered in 98, 99, 2000, whatever. Now we have a generally expanding international movement. So we're talking about 18 years from 92 to the present of the evolution of a whole new approach to in the most important issue in the world, which is exactly what you expect as you approach resolution. Prior to this, the era was the era of the UFO, 1947 to 1991, late 1991. And that involved these things. Well, this, this is one of the phenomena. This is obviously another phenomena. This obviously predates the Cold War, as you know. This predates the, the, the end of the Cold War. Uh, and, of course, the study of the ancient alien issue. One of the most difficult but fascinating of all was going on prior to the end of the Cold War. And, of course, abductions, contact was going on prior to the end of all that was happening. That was the realm of ufology. And then, of course, you had the government involvement. The government involvement goes all the way back to 47. Ufology did not go there. It really didn't do much in that area. Uh, it had its hands full as it was. One of the great tragedies of the, of the UFO era was James McDonald, the atmospheric physicist based at uh, University of Arizona, or Arizona State, I can't remember, who did more probably to advance the science of UFOs than any other single living person, he talked to more scientists than any other living person, then or now, on this issue, trying to advance it. But he had one fundamental flaw. Dr. McDonald was a very strong patriot, and he could not possibly imagine that the United States government would, in fact, embargo this issue. He could not accept it. And so he shut that out. And I'll pursue the science, we'll resolve this issue, we'll get somewhere, and we'll, we'll move forward. Later in his life, he started to understand that, in fact, the government had embargoed the issue. And it broke him. And eventually, he killed himself for other reasons as well as that.